This is a flight simulator virtual reality helmet. The pilot sees a virtual world through two tiny computer monitors in front of their eyes. As the pilot moves their head, the corresponding view changes in the virtual cockpit. The idea of virtual reality has captured our imagination for a long time, but the technology to make a truly immersive experience still eludes us. We decided to experiment a little with virtual reality to see if it could apply to Flight Simulator. I'll take you through the process of starting with a stock VR headset and ending up with a custom VR helmet. This experiment started with the VR920 Virtual Reality Headset from Vuzix. It has three main components, the display, the view tracker, and the earbud speakers. The first thing we did was throw away the extraneous speakers. Our simulators already have speakers. The view tracking system is much like Track IR because as you move your head, you see around your virtual cockpit. However, the VR920 works with different technology, so you can actually turn your real head around to see over your real shoulder. You can't do that with Track IR. The view tracker in the VR920 works with internal magnets, but they just don't work that well. Oftentimes, the view would become stuck and need to be recentered. Now, Track IR has a hotkey to recenter the view, but the VR920 does not. So you'd actually have to shake your head like a dog to recenter the magnets. We quickly disabled the VR920's view tracker and just used our existing reliable track IR. Next, the display system. The VR920's tiny monitors appear to have little Fresnel lenses to make the images appear larger in front of the pilot's eyes. Very cool. Unfortunately, the monitors only have 640 by 480 resolution. And that resolution is too low for air combat and too low for civil flight simulators because you can't read your instruments. But we tried it anyway. Light from around the edges of the headpiece can make the screens hard to see, so Vuzix sells a snap-on shroud to help block the light. That helps with the light in front of you, but that doesn't totally solve the problem. Light from behind your head can also wash out the image. So what to do? We needed to block out light in front and in back, like a hood or something. But I didn't really want to wear a hood. Well, what is something that pilots might wear on their head? Well, a helmet! So the first thing we did was chop off the uncomfortable earpieces and find a lightweight hockey helmet. We needed a way to suspend the eyepiece in front of the eyes, so we attached this face shield, painted it black, and held the eyepiece in place with Velcro. We originally had three track IR reflectors, and later used just one. It worked well, but looked like something the police would wear to a riot. So how can we do this with a real fighter pilot helmet? Those things are expensive, about four or five hundred dollars. Well, the answer was eBay. We found these Chinese motorcycle helmets for about forty dollars. I wouldn't trust my life to a forty dollar helmet, but it's great for a flight simulator. We painted the visor black and cut a square hole to accommodate the VR920. And again, we secured it with Velcro. This is the reflector for Track IR. The chin strap was awful, so we replaced that with Velcro too. We were planning to use this outside in a hangar, and it's warm in the summer, so we drilled ventilation holes in the top. Note wear safety glasses and a dust mask whenever you're drilling fiberglass. We wanted to make the helmet somewhat adjustable for different head sizes, so we removed the liner and replaced it with these foam insulation inserts. Use 
one insert for big heads and both inserts for smaller heads. We have hygienic bouffant caps so a lot of people can share the same helmet. Finally, we covered the big red china star with our red stripe and added some Roger Dodger decals. The best thing about the VR helmet is that it looks crazy awesome. The drawbacks are that you can't see any real life buttons on your instrument panel because your view is blocked. This means you're somewhat limited to flying with your hands on the throttle and joystick, which would be fine for dogfighting, but there again, the screen resolution is too low for air combat. If the resolution was just a little better, even a modest 1024 by 768 would be a great improvement. Also, the headpiece was awkward for pilots wearing glasses. But what we ended up with was an interesting experiment that worked pretty well, and we had a lot of fun in the process. And that's what it's all about.